Erica was furious. She found out that one of her classmates had been saying mean things about her behind her back. Erica was keen to confront the guy, but her friend Thomas managed to talk her out of doing anything rash, such as starting a fight. Later that day, Erica and Thomas were strolling home from school together. They dropped by a convenience store, where the clerk was a bad-tempered young man with a deep frown on his face. Thomas greeted him politely and spoke to the young man with great courtesy as he reluctantly served them, responding with little more than a sneer. The clerk clearly wasn't in the habit of using words like "thank you" very often. After they left the store, Erica remarked how rude the clerk had been. "Oh, he's always like that," replied Thomas cheerfully. Erica was intrigued. "So, how come you're so nice to him?" she asked. "Why should I let that guy decide how I feel?" Thomas responded. After reading the story, let's analyze the approaches that Erica and Thomas take to potentially unpleasant encounters. In fact, we can attach labels to these approaches. Erica was reactive in the way she responded to what she discovered. She allowed the news to determine her feelings and make her angry. Thomas, on the other hand, can be called proactive because he was in constant control of his emotions, regardless of how offensively the store clerk treated him. But being proactive or reactive. Is not just about responding to other people's conduct. For one thing, deciding to be proactive or reactive has a huge effect on how we manage our lives. It manifests itself most obviously in our attitudes to dealing with problems. A proactive person will immediately look for applicable solutions and opportunities to take back control. Someone who is reactive, by contrast. Is more likely to just grumble about the problem, play the victim, or blame other people for what happened. It's not hard to imagine who has a better chance of achieving their goals. This is not to imply that everyone in the world is either proactive or reactive all the time. In fact, it is not until we encounter a situation that we tend to respond to it. But we can often choose to be one or the other. Maybe your little brother says nasty things to you over breakfast. You go out without an umbrella, and it starts pouring down. The bus to school is delayed and horribly overcrowded. You get a lower grade than you had anticipated on yesterday's math quiz. Some of these things are beyond our control, of course, and there is no harm in venting your frustration by shouting out, "I'm sick of this rain." But for the things you can influence, a proactive approach is a better option. A reactive person will probably yell at their little brother and worsen the already bad atmosphere. They might be enraged by the disappointing math grade, or harbor feelings of anger toward the teacher. Someone with a proactive personality will contemplate ways to improve their sibling relationships, as well as regarding the math grade. As providing an opportunity for improvement, they will focus on finding solutions rather than stewing in their feelings of anger and frustration. Reactive people are led by circumstances, while the behavior of proactive ones results from a conscious choice. Simply put, the key to being proactive is to be in control rather than under it. You can allow your feelings to be influenced by what happens around you. Or you can take control of them yourself. The choice is yours.